find two vectors parallel to vector v, which is defined by the components 16, negative 12, 0, with a magnitude of 25. So let's just quickly recall that we know two vectors are parallel if they're scalar multiples of each other. So if vector u is equal to c times vector v, such that c is some real number, then u and v are parallel. So that's our job. We want to find two vectors that are parallel to our given vector v. But now we have this extra condition. These two new parallel vectors must have a magnitude of 25. So to get us started, let's think about our given vector here. So we have vector v defined by the components 16, negative 12, 0. And looking at this vector, we realize we have a greatest common factor of 4, or a scalar multiple of 4. So I'm going to pull that 4 out in front. So I have 4 times the vector with components 4, negative 3, 0. So what this is telling us, based off of our definition, is that the vector 16, negative 12, 0, and the smaller vector 4, minus 3, 0, are parallel because they are scalar multiples of each other. Now, since these vectors are parallel, it's going to be beneficial to work with the smaller vector. It's always nicer to work with smaller numbers. So let's observe what's going on with this vector. Let's think about its magnitude. So I want to think about the magnitude of the vector 4, negative 3, 0. Okay, so this gives us the square root of 4 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 0 squared. And so this leaves us with the square root of 16 plus 9. Oh, how convenient. So we have the square root of 25, which leaves us with 5. So this vector, 4 minus 3, 0, has a magnitude of of 5. We want two vectors that have a magnitude of 25. So in order to find that, we simply need to multiply this smaller vector by 5. So therefore we can say that 5 times the vector 4, negative 3, 0 has a magnitude of 25. And I'll abbreviate magnitude of 25. But we also need another vector, right? So remember that if we have a negative scalar multiple, it's simply pointing in the opposing direction. So we can say that and the vector negative 5 times 4 minus 3, 0, that vector 4 minus 3, 0 also has a magnitude of 25. Since will have the same length, it's just that the vector is pointing in the opposing direction. So let's take this one extra step further and double check our work. The great thing about vector arithmetic is it's arithmetic, it's algebra. We can always check. So let's do a quick check here. So I'm going to go ahead and let w, vector w, be defined as 5 times the vector 4 minus 3, 0. So we can also think about this by the distributive property as the vector 20 minus 15, 0. And in addition to this, let's let vector u be minus 5 times vector 4, negative 3, 0. So the only difference here is that the signs change. This is negative 20, positive 15, 0. And because we know that if you raise a negative or positive value to an even degree, it'll remain positive, we can check both of these magnitudes simultaneously. So here we go. We want to verify that the magnitude of vector u, uh, vector w, equals the magnitude of vector u, which equals 25. So let's plug these coordinates into our distance formula. So we have this square root of plus or minus 20 squared plus 
plus or minus 15 squared plus 0 squared. And doing a little algebra here, we have uh, 20 squared is 400, plus 15 squared gives us 225, and 0 squared is just 0. So we have the square root of 625, and we're excited because we know that 625 is 25 squared. Woohoo! So the square and the square root cancel each other out, leaving us with that magnitude of 25. And so we have officially confirmed our answer here. These are two vectors parallel to that given vector v, both with a magnitude of 25.